Today in our 2012 Chevy Malibu, we'll be installing the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms, part number BX1679. I'll go ahead and do a demonstration of installing the removable arm. We'll line up the arm with the base plate tube, slide it in, and turn until it locks into position. Take the removable arm out of the base plate, we'll simply pull back on the locking ring, releasing the pin, rotate the removable arm, and it will release from the base plate. Then we can install the receiver cap plug to keep out the dust, dirt, and debris. To begin our install, we'll first need to remove the front fascia. To do this, we'll go ahead and raise the hood and remove the top cover between the fascia and the front core support. There are multiple bolts and pushpin fasteners. We'll first remove the bolts and then the pushpin fasteners. To remove the pushpin fasteners, we'll pry out on the center of the fastener and then remove the two-piece fastener completely. Once we have them all removed and set aside, we'll go ahead and remove the top cover. Next, we'll move to the wheel well. Inside the wheel well, there are four pushpin fasteners that connect the wheel well to the front fascia. We'll go ahead and remove these four pushpin fasteners. Remove the bolt that secures the front fascia to the front fender. It's secured through the cutout hole in the wheel well. We'll go ahead and repeat this. Same process for the opposite side. Next, we're gonna move underneath the vehicle. Noting for this application, a good portion of the underbody paneling is missing. However, what does remain still connects the front fascia to the wheel well so we'll go ahead and remove those fasteners. Once we have all the fasteners removed, we can go ahead and remove the front fascia. To remove the front fascia, we'll pull out in the corner of the fascia where it meets the wheel well, releasing the fasteners underneath. We'll work the front fascia loose as it goes underneath the headlight. And once we have both sides worked loose, we'll go ahead and remove it from the vehicle. Note it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you do this so that the front fascia doesn't fall. Next, on the passenger side, we'll need to remove the air baffle. The air baffle is secured with a pushpin fastener, which we'll remove. Remove the fastener completely. And a bolt that's behind the air baffle near the wheel well and inner frame. Once we remove the bolt, we can go ahead and pull down on the air baffle and remove it, setting it aside for reinstallation later. On each side, there's a fastener connecting the air dam to the frame. We'll go ahead and remove it. Next, we'll need to start trimming the air cowling that goes around the radiator and core support. Just below the bumper, inside the frame rail, we'll need to trim the air cowling. Using a paint marker, we'll go ahead and mark it first. Then using a utility knife or a rotary tool, we can go ahead and trim the plastic. Once we cut it, we'll remove the bottom half by removing the pushpin fastener and setting the whole piece aside as it will not be reinstalled. We'll trim out a larger section. Using our paint marker, we'll draw a straight line down the corner of the air cowling to make room for the base plate. Once we have it marked out, we'll go ahead and use our rotary tool or knife to remove this piece. We'll do this to both sides. On the passenger side, we'll need to cut along the top edge and then down the corner.
Next, we'll remove the bolt that holds the horn to the frame, then unhook the horn wiring. We can set the horn aside for reinstallation later. On each side, there are multiple fasteners to be removed. Some of these fasteners will be secured to the underbody fascia, the frame, or the inner fender well. Once they're removed, we'll go ahead and pull the inner fender well out and remove these pieces completely, setting them aside for reinstallation later. Now with that done, we've exposed the frame rails on both sides, and we can go ahead and put our base plate in position. As we put the base plate in place, it's a good idea to get an extra set of hands to help you hold it in position. We'll push it up from the bottom of the frame, tight, and pull it out towards the front of the vehicle, hitting the front bumper flange. Once we have it in position, we'll secure it with vice grips or clamps. Now with our base plate in position, we'll use it as a template to drill out our attachment points. We'll have a total of six attachment points, three in each side. So we'll go ahead and take the 13 30 seconds drill bit, using the base plate as a template, we'll go ahead and mark the center point for each of the holes. Once we have the center point marked, we can use a step bit process starting with a smaller pilot bit and working our way up to the 13 30 seconds drill bit size. Now with each of the attachment points drilled out, we can go ahead and start installing the hardware. As per the instructions, each fastener will get red Loctite applied to the threads before being installed. We'll be using the Loctite part number LT37420. Now we'll be using a 3 8 by 1 inch long bolt that will go through the two lower attachment points. On the back side, We'll secure it with a split lock washer and nut. For the upper attachment point, we'll use a handle nut. We can take the handle nut, feed it through the access hole on the bottom of the frame, then over to the attachment point and thread the bolt into the handle nut. We'll be using a 3 8 by one and a half inch long bolt going through a split lock washer, through the base plate, into the frame, and securing it into the handle nut. Once we have all the fasteners in place, we'll tighten them down. We can remove the clamps and secure the last connection point on this side. There are three fasteners on the other side and we can repeat the same process. With all of our fasteners tightened, we can then torque the specifications as indicated in instructions. We can use a pair of side cutters or tin snips to cut off the end of the handle nut. Then we'll push the remaining end inside the frame. Now with our base plate installed and secured, we'll need to trim the air dam so that we can reinstall it. First, we'll take a paint marker and mark out the section to be trimmed. Once again, we can use a utility knife or rotary tool to cut out the section. Once we have it cut out, we'll put our air dam back into place and re-secure it with the fasteners. Now we'll repeat the same process on the other side. On the driver's side, we'll reinstall the horn and it will use the open fourth hole on the base plate. Next, we'll reinstall the air baffle. The fasteners will go through the air baffle through the pre-drilled hole in the base plate and then secured. Next, we'll reinstall the front fascia. As we set it back into position as closely as possible, we'll need to mark the cutout section of the lower fascia to make room for the base plate. We'll use our paint marker to mark the sections, and then we'll use our rotary tool to cut it out.
Now with the necessary trimming completed, we can go ahead and reinstall the front fascia. With all the fasteners and bolts reinstalled, we'll need to take each of the safety cables, go around the frame with it, and come back up with each of the loops connecting to the base plate using the quick link. Next, we'll use a couple of zip ties. This will assist in keeping the safety cables up and off the ground and clean up the install look. Now with everything reinstalled, this will complete the installation. And there you have it for our install of the Blue Ox Base Plate Kit with Removable Arms, part number BX1679 on our 2012 Chevy Malibu.